I sometimes wonder, where did all my stuff go? Well, we always have an odd one in the crowd. So it's kind of odd. Decidedly odd. Doesn't that strike you as a little bit odd? No, it doesn't strike me as a little bit odd. It's the Bob and Sherry Oddcast. The stuff we wouldn't, couldn't, or shouldn't do on the regular show. Now, here's the Oddcast. And welcome, folks. Welcome. And we're very sorry you couldn't come up with anything else to do right now. But we're very grateful that you decided to uh, come and join us on the Oddcast. So uh, we finished uh, our summer, uh, part of our summer anyway, in Charleston, South Carolina, as Mary looked back on her family's history here that goes way back. And she had a great time. And I did, too. I mean, it's a very humid and warm place during the summer, but it's a beautiful, beautiful city. And the house that we uh, rented was a very unusual house. It was uh, right near, not real near the historic district, but uh, within walking distance, an old house. I think it's about 150 years old and has been um, redone to a certain degree. It was a pretty casual place, but nice. They uh, decorated it um, themselves, I think, which I always admire. And they incorporated things that were from their family and also pieces that they thought would fit from a certain era, like 150 years ago. <laughs> And there are three floors on that house, three floors. So going up and down the stairs all the time could kind of drive you a little bit crazy. But, you know, it's, it's, that's the way people lived back then. The third floor was closed off to renters. And so uh, never went in that room up there. But there was a little landing right in the th- on the way up to the third floor. Because there are so many steps, I guess you needed, I, I, and they put a little settee. I think that's what is that a, a informal couch, Sherry? That is like a, mostly it's like a little fancy love seat sized situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They they had a, a kind of a small version of that, a little settee right there on the landing as you made the turn to go to the third story uh, living area, whatever that was. And I looked at it. And the little settee, and I thought, there is nobody who is sitting in that thing. That piece of furniture is not there for any purpose other than to fill a little space and to look like it's a part of the heritage of this house. And they probably said, you know, uh, we need to put something here because probably that's what really wealthy people did in Charleston and, and certainly in England when this house was first built. We can't just leave it empty. We have to put something there. And they put it there. And I just thought back to my own uh, growing up as an adult, how I sometimes would buy stuff that I thought, or I would get stuff that I thought I would have forever. And I look back and all that stuff is gone. It doesn't exist anymore. The oak piece of furniture that w- had a little seat in it and also hooks to put your coat when you come through the door. I could remember how proud I was when uh, my, uh, my ex-wife and I got that just starting out. It's gone. The, the bookcase that I just, at, when I was single, just loved it. Got it out of a library at an auction. 150 bucks. My, my pride and joy, I don't know where it is. It got gone. Some of it's a move, and some of it's a divorce, and some of it, you just don't know where it went. And I'm thinking, if I had it to do all over again, would I buy any of this stuff? And that's what we're going to kick around in just a moment. We'll be right back on the Oddcast. So we're talking about stuff. Stuff that you had and you thought you'd have forever. But now, it's it's totally gone. Most of the furniture that I collected over my whole life is gone. Most of the stuff, like with the second marriage, uh, she came from a very affluent family. And I thought, man, I've never had anything really, really nice. So she would say, yeah, we're going to have a registry. I said, yeah. They put down a Waterford crystal for wine glasses. And she said, I don't care. And she put it down and I'll be darned. Her parents, friends, and family gave us like 
15 Waterford crystal wine goblets and, and water uh, glasses. It was fantastic. And even some, some silver, a few pieces of actual utensils that were silver. It's all gone. It's disappeared. I think I might have one wine glass left. And I know the silver's all gone because I went out of the backyard one day and Allie was digging with a, a soup spoon. So that's, that's how some of that stuff got going. And I, I wonder if people who do not inherit great pieces of property that have very expensive uh, real antiques, I wonder if other people have the same experience. I could remember so clearly that some of the furniture that I had in my first apartment, in, in, in the first apartment I had as a married man, in the first house I had, and the first house I had as a married man. And it's like none of that stuff survived. It's all gone. I wonder how much of this is because you're a dude, you know? Because I can tell you that my husband could say all of the same things about different items. <laughs> Really, and uh, all the men I know pretty much could have this same conversation. I wonder. I mean, listen. Um, I lost everything in a divorce. I lost the sugar in the sugar bowl. I mean, I lost everything. I can't believe I didn't have to like scoop an eyeball out of my head and give him that too. So I know what it's like to. Mm -hmm. I know what it's like to um, have a full system cleanse through the D. Mm -hmm. But most of the women I know would not like, I'm just talking my, like the women in my life would mm -hmm. not say what you just said. It wouldn't be true for them, but it's kind of true for the dudes. What do you think? You know, you may be right because I, I hadn't thought about this and I was in my ex's house picking up my grandchildren about three months ago and I'd never, she bought a new house, she and her husband. And uh, I went in and you know, complimented the house and I looked over and there was my dining room table and chairs that I got, that I got for doing an, an appearance for a radio station, <laughs> like a Listen. six hour appearance. They, they said, yeah, you know, we, we buy this for next to nothing. We'll trade you. And it was a nice, I mean, it wasn't big. It was round. It would sit, you know, six people. And there it was. This is a dude thing because, so, you know, my husband is a, is an artist. He went to art school. He's incredibly talented. He does not make his living as an artist, but, um, he's, he's made a lot of work. Right. And he doesn't even like to discuss it. And if he overheard me saying that he was an artist, he would unplug my microphone, but he is, that's just the truth. So his ex, her parents have a beach house. Mm -hmm. And um, a few years ago, um, we drove down to the beach to surprise his daughter on her birthday because it was the COVID lockdowns and we hadn't been able to see anybody. And y'all remember yeah. what that was like. Oh, yeah. And so um, we drove down. We surprised her on the beach. We spent the whole day. It was me and Kevin, Olivia and Karamia. We spent the whole day. We had so much fun. And at the end, we followed them back to the grandparents' beach house and we said goodbye and I walk, it's my first time being there. I walk inside and Kevin's paintings are all over the walls. Oh, and these oh, are really Kevin's paintings are hanging on the walls of his former in-laws vacation house. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, that is like a thing that happens to men. Would he like his paintings back? Maybe. Um, he's very, uh, you know, like I said, he's super private about this and would not discuss this with anyone, but would he like his paintings back? He might like his paintings back, but they are hanging over the, the mantle, like in, over the couch, like big, beautiful paintings. And, and I'm looking at them and I see like his signature. I'm like, did you, that, he goes, oh yeah, mm -hmm. that, that one mm -hmm. and that one. And there's another one in the bedroom and there's one in the hallway, one over there. And then there are also some of his paintings hanging at my sister wife's house and at her uncle's house. I think this is a dude thing. I think that when you are a man and you are in a relationship, whether it's a marriage or not, um, it's up for grabs what you will be able to 
keep when it's over. And I don't know why this is, Bob. I don't know who made these rules. But as I sit here and think about it, it's like every guy I know could tell some version of that story. My blood just ran cold now because this is what you've described is a flip concerning what people who are civilized say. They, they say things don't matter. People matter. But when you get down to it, sometimes things, things matter more than certain people. <laughs> well, I'm here to tell you there was, from what I gather, because we're all very, very close now. And we have made, um, my sister wife and I are very proud of the family that we've built together out of all these different separate pieces. But I can uh -huh. tell you that once upon a time, they wouldn't have took, they wouldn't have pissed on him if he was on fire, but boy, they sure did like his artwork. <laughs> they were going to hang that on That's the That's what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. Isn't that funny? Things in certain situations... <laughs> Things, things are going to go on, you know, and, 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 you know, guys are, pro I think you're right about the guy thing. Guys are probably saying, oh, that's the chair that we used to sit in. Yeah, well, There's the love seat and it's, and it's gone now. And she's, and she's thinking, man, I like this love seat and I like sitting in it alone. I listen, <laughs> I want to speak directly to the dudes. I feel your pain, even as I'm sitting here saying, I think it's mostly you that's lucky to leave with, you know, the shirt on your back. When my girls were younger and I would drop them off and pick them up from their dads, mm -hmm. it was like the museum of things Sherry worked hard to buy. Okay. Oh, like, Cause I yeah. lost everything. Yeah. So my brothers sit right next to me on the bench. Cause I know what it feels like to be you. I have a great idea what it feels like to be you. Which is why I think I'm so aware of and sensitive to the fact that y'all tend to lose everything <laughs> and start completely over. It is a sickening a feeling. What you just described, I know. Because, uh, and I'm not getting into personalities, and I get along with everybody, present and past. But uh, the first time I walked into an ex's house, shortly after the end of the relationship, and I saw what you're describing, all the stuff that I paid for. Uh, not to say that, you know, as, as uh, a mom, it, it's not a great contribution and deserve 50%. I'm not saying that, but I am saying <laughs> I had a couch, I had a case of beer <laughs> for a while, and I had a TV and something to put it on. And that was, that was about it, to walk into the, into the condo. And and see what you just described, furniture. It's just and yeah, and I paintings mean, and paintings um, of our children, um, which which I didn't contest. I just I, I'm very old school that way about a woman who has given birth. Uh, if there's something that is meaningful that connects her to her children, she gets as as they used to say. And thank you, Pee Wee Herman, first dibs. She gets first dibs. One funny thing um, that I really enjoyed, a funny moment concerning this sort of thing. The ex and I were uh, in Maine, and we bought a couple of paintings from a local artist named Henry Isaac, and he's excellent. He does, he does these fantastic uh, pastels and uh, some watercolors and some oils. We bought two of them, all right, unframed. Bought them in Little Cranberry Island. So... He's my, he's my favorite. I found him. I know him. And I said, um, I want these paintings. And she said, I'd like to have one of them. And I went, oh, okay. So she took one and I took one. And I got first, first grab on this one. And so uh, she came over to pick up something and saw the Henry Isaac that I had. And she said, you know, um, I know this is strange. But we both have a connection with this artist and everything. Um, when you go, will you leave this <laughs> to me? Oh no, God. no, wait, just, just wait, just wait. And I said, yeah. Same thing with you. And her jaw dropped. 
Yeah, because she had wasn't a good expecting. Laugh. No, yeah. no. Well, she I'm wasn't older. Expecting. I, I'm yeah. a few years older, and and so you know, it, it really in this life, it doesn't matter if you're uh, 25 minutes older. You're going to be the first one to go right in in, in somebody else's head. And uh, well, he, her jaw dropped, and then she laughed. We had a good laugh over that. Here's here's my version of that. So, the first year that we are apart. Um, Thanksgiving rolls around and now it's a couple weeks before Christmas. The ex shows up at my door and he would like his Christmas ornaments. And I said, I'm sorry, what? His Christmas ornaments. And I said, what do you mean your Christmas ornaments? And he goes, all the ornaments that were, used to be my grandmother's and, and uh, blah, 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 blah. And I stood there and I said, I hate to be the one to tell you that your first ex-wife got those. You, uh, you're at the wrong house. I don't have your Christmas decorations. <laughs> and and oh, I didn't. God. Oh, that's I misery. What a I, I'm line. Like, he's like, what do, you, what do you mean? I said, listen, you are free to come inside and come with me up to the attic where all the decorations are because you know your girl is real, real anal retentive about how Christmas decorations are organized and packed. And well, I am happy to go through every box with you. And if there's anything here that belonged to your Ninu or whatever he called her, you, of course you're going to have it. Of course. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not one. There was not one. Um, oh, that <laughs> line. That is devastating. But it, it was your, and I, I was like, you know what? If you're going to keep, if you're going to keep tossing wives like this, you're going to want to create an inventory tracking and management system. <laughs> So that you know which of us got your stuff. And I did feel, you know, I did. <laughs> An inventory. I mean, seriously, like, but. Like a tracking system. You're a very linear. You're That's very analytical That's almost unfair, man. Sherry. Sherry, really, that is almost No, unfair. I was like, you're a, you're a very linear man. You have a very <laughs> um, analytical mind. You're good with databases. Let's Ugh. see you put one together. But I did feel, listen, just so we're all mm -hmm. clear, um, mm -hmm. I wasn't giving him my grandma black hair's um, Christmas mm -hmm. decorations, none of which no. came from the old country, all of which came from like Kmart, but that doesn't make them any less precious to me, okay? Like right, I wasn't right. giving those up. And I did feel, you know what I, I why I felt bad? Because it, he was lost. Like he did not know where his things were. <laughs> and I just, I don't even, like I'm laughing, but it's, a, it's like sad. Like it was really sad, but I couldn't help him. And it's, and it's not like I slammed the door in his face and called the law dogs. I was like, you're welcome to look. I don't have this. I don't have this stuff. And I did feel terrible. And it stayed with me enough that we're sitting here talking about it. I did feel bad for sure. It's a, a terrible place for him to be. Speaking as a let's say it were me. I'm not going to talk about him. Let's say that I was that, that guy. That it's you. Yeah. Yeah. I am then, um, well, I turn ashen, first of all, because it's been pointed out to me that perhaps my choices in my life have not all been uh, rose petals and, uh, and, and sweet-smelling country air. Um, I've, I've made some mistakes along the way. And, and this is actually worse, I'm confused. That, that, was, the, that was the thing of it. And he did not mm -hmm. believe me. I mean, I really had to prove to him. that. And you know, the, Bob, like, like, I'm super, first of all, it's a cliche, but it's a cliche because it's true. Women make Christmas, right? It um, is true. I don't know. I don't know any men. They're, they're out there. I am not disputing that these men exist. I don't personally know any men that give that much of a damn about the Christmas decorations. I don't, much less the Christmas ornaments. I don't, even my brother, who is so sentimental and such a capital D-A-D -D dad, he doesn't know what part of the house they're stored in. So mm -hmm. I felt bad for him, but the, the reality is, is like, dude, what, you know, if you, what, you don't care about this we were married for how many years and you never put a single ornament on or off the tree. Like, what are you doing showing up at my doorstep acting like I'm holding Nana's crystal freaking reindeer hostage? Like, 
Well, uh, once it once it was proven, though, I'm sure that, you know, I know the guy. I'm sure that once it was proven. Did you actually go up in the attic? I, yeah. I was like, really? yeah, come you on. You had let's to go. prove it. You had to prove let's it. Let's go look. Come on. Let's go look. Because if, if let's say, there was a box up there and I wasn't aware of it, I wouldn't yeah. have wanted to find it later and feel like I'd, I was the Grinch. Come on. Let's go have a look. Let's go see. I, so how did that I didn't end? have it. How, how did that how did that day in, end? In dusty, bewildered confusion. <laughs> and I and I know because I'm friends with his I'm friends with that ex-wife. I could have mm -hmm. called her on the phone and she would have laughed till she had to put the phone down to wipe tears before telling me, Oh yeah, I have his stupid mistletoe or whatever. Um whatever. but I, I I didn't. I mean, I was over. I was overwhelmed. I was working with two little kids, trying to put Christmas together, and my children. Um, they went to a um, a, a language a ma immersion magnet school, so they studied every kind of Christmas around the world. Christmas with Olivia and Caramia back then, when I'm in the attic looking for his lost treasures. Christmas was Christmas, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa. Um, we had parades. They would we would have special foods. It was a month long multinational celebration mm -hmm. of the Yuletide. Like I was overwhelmed, so I, I didn't even have like the bandwidth to call the first ex wife and and tell her heads up what's this Christmas decorations. But I do. I felt bad that day, and I feel yeah. bad right now. I feel yeah. so bad right now. Maybe not that because, bad. <laughs> well, not bad enough to not tell the story. Of course, like let's get some. <laughs> Let's be honest, but yeah. do you know what makes me feel bad? Like in my whole life, like I've lost a lot of stuff from moves. And, you know, when my, my father took me back East, I left everything behind, including my dog. He wouldn't let me bring anything. So I know what it feels like to start over with nothing, but there was something about it being Christmas decorations, Christmas ornaments that right. really punched me in the gut and made me feel so sad, you know? Well, I think that you're right that, um, first of all, well, I, I actually, I said this, we get confused and, um, cause we're out there trying to find the next one. Um, we get confused and Christmas is generally almost universally run by women. And you're going to go to Lowe's and get that green, and red plastic box and put everything in there and know what is what. And we're, we're just totally oblivious to the whole thing. I can, I'm, glad, I have, I'm glad that particular situation never happened to me. I have a sled made out of popsicle sticks that my nephew Ryan made for me when he was five years old in my mm -hmm. Christmas ornament collection. Ryan right. runs a business now and is married with a child. Like I hold on to that stuff and I know exactly where all of it is. Um, and I'm a, like, you can say a lot of things about me, but I have never stolen a man's Christmas decorations. <laughs> that's like, that's so low. Who would do that? I would never. It's what, it, it's what uh, George Carlin once said in one of his most famous um, stand up bits. He said, we go through our lives collecting stuff. It's just stuff. And it some of it, just... some of it stays with us and some of it ends up in one of our ex's attics. And Thank if you, you have folks. a lot of exes, folks, I would really love for you to consider my inventory tracking and management system for dudes. Oh yeah. Yeah. Guys, if you're engaged, Listen to what she's saying. You just get that. You just scan it. You know, Excel. everything has a barcode on. Yeah. You just scan that barcode right into your it's inventory yours. database. And then you it's know. You, you know. can find. You can right. find that light up reindeer. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. New episodes of the Oddcast. Hey, get, get her Monday. name on each item. Like which name. Okay. Don't forget that part. That's important. Yeah. So you know whose house to go to. Exactly. Um, new episodes of the Oddcast every Monday. On Fridays, we serve you Talking Lamar and True Weird Stuff. Our website is B-O-B-A-N-D-S-H-E-R-I.com. And we so appreciate your listening. See you next time on the Oddcast. Um.